Hello everyone. Hello everyone, so we're doing Arcade Raid here. And um, in my last video you may have noticed that my that it ended pretty abruptly. And that was unintentional. Um uh, there's this I don't know if you can see them, but they're just like buttons on the bottom of my screen. Where I can like draw stuff. Hold on. Let me show you. Lock, lock. There we go, that's pretty cool. And then, how do I get rid of it? But anyways, I can do I can do a bunch of stuff like that. I can mute my microphone. I can I can even pause the recording, and that basically means I can just like I have to go do something in the middle of the recording. I pause it. I come back, and you know, I don't see the part where I left or anything. It just goes right back to the part where I just was. But apparently, like, occasionally what will happen is that it'll end the video, just just by pausing it. <sighs> and the video is supposed to end, like, I don't know. I don't even know. Like, eight minutes later or something like that, or six? I don't remember the exact time, but, yeah. Also, I didn't, um... I didn't record because I had to go somewhere. I know I said I was going to do these on the same day, but I, said, but I had to go somewhere. And also, uh, this thing was glitching. But I fixed it today. It turned out that there was nothing wrong with it. And, there were, and I was just not being very smart. But let's get started. Clap. Cloudy Vaughn, Cloudy Victor Perrine, I think, I don't remember, that was horrible, but, yeah, left off like 20 seconds later, but that's fine, it'll be a good place to refresh, I guess, okay, by the time, Victor was better than one might suppose, was an experienced soldier by the time of the French Revolution, a sergeant with eight years service in the Grenoble Artillery Regiment. Grenoble. The Revolutionary Wars brought the opportunity for rapid promotion. And by 1793, he was commanding an infantry battalion at the Siege of Toulon. He led a oh, daring yeah, night Toulon. assault on British defences alongside the army's artillery chief, a young Major Bonaparte. Both men were wounded, but the attack was a success. And both were quickly promoted to Brigadier General. Good job. I'm Victor you. served under General Bonaparte in Italy and turned out to be a brilliant brigade commander. Congratulations. In 1800, he distinguished himself at the Battle of Marengo, where his command of the left wing won particular praise from Napoleon. Victor commanded the army's. Wait, what? I need to read it. For praise from Napoleon. Victor commanded at the army's left. Where he conducted himself with great bravery to help. First Consul Napoleon. But Victor did not hide his disapproval of Napoleon's quest for political power. Jeez, look at that picture. He looks so sad. Wow. And as a result, and it looks like his arm is missing or something. Salt received relatively yeah. minor roles under the new regime. In 1802, he was earmarked to lead an expedition to recover the French territory of Louisiana. But it was called off when Napoleon decided instead to sell Louisiana to the United States. Yeah. Seriously, though, France, thank you very much for that. Man. Like, like, look, it doubled, our, it doubled the size of our country. It doubled the size of the United States. Also, it gave us a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of cool little states like Louisiana and North Dakota, Iowa, and all the other cool states that we have. And it allowed us to get Texas because Texas got its independent independence from Mexico, and we wouldn't have been able to um, border them and annex them. And we, as we all know, Texas is the best state in the United States, obviously. So yeah, and also it allowed us to um, it allowed us to manifest our destiny and take over Mexico. 
like half of Mexico. And now we have California. So yeah, thank you, France. Decided instead to sell Louisiana to the United States. Yeah, seriously, look at that price. Decided instead to sell Louisiana. 11, 11 million dollars. Oh my gosh. Like today, there's like... Like today, if there was a billionaire, like even if, um, even if that price was how it is today, based on inflation, um, I, like someone could, like a billionaire or something, could just buy all of that and make it their own country. Like, look how cheap that is, jeez. Yana to the United States. Victor and Marshall Lan were close friends from their days serving together in Italy. In 1806, so Lan persuaded Napoleon to let him have Victor as his new chief of staff for Fifth Corps. Napoleon agreed, and in October, Victor served as Lan's deputy at the Battle of Jena. Napoleon's earlier misgivings about Victor were now forgotten, and that winter he was given command of the newly formed Tenth Corps. But within weeks, he was captured by a Prussian patrol what? and had to be exchanged for a captured Prussian officer, you donkey. General von Blücher. Oh, yeah, His big break came in 1807, stepping in for the wounded Marshal Bernadotte to command 1st Corps at Friedland, where he successfully led a major attack as the Emperor looked on. That is great, especially since Friedland was such a good victory. Like, he must have won a lot of praise for that. And, yeah, we have an, epi I have an episode about that. Um, so, yeah, go ahead and check that out. That's a reaction of the Battle of Friedland. Promotion to Marshal and the title Duke of Bellumo swiftly followed. In 1808, Marshal Victor and First Corps took part in the invasion of Spain, where he'd be posted for the next three years. Victor's record in Spain was better than most, but like others, he seemed more interested in personal glory and rewards than in oh, cooperating gosh. with fellow commanders. Yeah, that was a theme of another marshal, I think, or maybe even more than one, but I remember specifically Napoleon's quotes for one of them that was low on the, um, on the I guess of like how good they are that little chart with all the people and everything but yeah he was pretty low and napoleon's exact quote was talking about how he was after riches and fame and that good luck with him even though he's good in 1809 at medellin he inflicted a crushing defeat on general cuesta's spanish army four months later his bold night attack on the british at talavera came tantalizingly close to success. He was furious the next day when King Joseph and Marshal Jourdain refused to support fresh attacks oh, and instead gosh. ordered a cautious withdrawal. The next year, Victor besieged the Spanish port of Cadiz. It proved a lengthy, futile operation devoid of glory and saw his troops defeated by an allied sortie at the Battle of Barossa. In 1812, Victor was recalled from Spain for the invasion of Russia. His Ninth Corps was held in reserve for most of the campaign, though his troops were kept busy defending depots and convoys from Cossack raids. That autumn, his corps attempted to cover the main army's retreat from Moscow. The greatest crisis of the retreat came at the Berezina River. As the remnants of the Grande Armée began crossing over two improvised bridges, Victor's Ninth Corps was ordered to form the rear guard. Though heavily outnumbered, Victor skillfully handled his French and German troops, holding the Russians at bay as the army made its escape. Nice. He then marched his surviving troops over the bridges in good order. A courageous performance, desperate circumstances. I am so proud. In Germany in 1813, Victor commanded 2nd Corps and led the attack in Napoleon's last great victory. Why do they have to call it Germany? What the heck? Because there's like two different things they could be talking about. Either one, 
they could be talking about Depressia or. Hey everyone, uh, my recorder um, crashed, so that's nice. But anyways, what I was saying was they could be either talking about R uh, Prussia or they could be talking about any of those little German states in the Confederation of the Rhine. Like, that's really vague. Like, I wish they would just name, if they're talking about the Confederation, then the Confederation of the Rhine, it would be helpful if they talked about, you know, if they said the specific state or city or something. Oh, never mind. Um, it's 1813, I think. That wouldn't make sense, because I think Prussia already got defeated. I mean, um, surrendered. And joined the Allies by 1812 or something like that. So I guess they're talking about the Confederation of the Rhine somewhere. ...at Dresden. His corps was in heavy fighting again at Leipzig two months later. Victor continued to serve at the Emperor's side in the defense of France in 1814. Epic. Yeah. By now, like many comrades, he must have been close to physical and psychological exhaustion. Regardless, during the Battle of Montereau, Napoleon let fly at him for failing to get his troops into position and blamed him for the Allies' escape. Oh, gosh. Victor was relieved of command, what? but angry Dang. and humiliated at what he considered his unfair dismissal, he told the Emperor, Marshal Victor has not forgotten his old trade. I will shoulder a musket and take my place in the guard. Moved by this response, Napoleon relented and gave Victor command of a corps of young guard. Okay. Two weeks later, he was badly wounded at the Battle of Crown and took no further part in the war. A month later, Napoleon abdicated, and uh, Victor switched his loyalty to the Bourbon monarchy. Dude. Rude. Why would you do that? What's wrong with you? With surprising zeal. He led an investigation into former comrades who'd supported Napoleon during the Hundred Days and was one of only two active marshals to vote for the death penalty for Marshal Ney, a decision he later claimed to regret. You can go screw yourself, dude. What is... I, I hate this guy. I hate him. What is wrong with him? Victor later served as Minister of War, but retired from public life in 1830, Seriously, dude, following the, the overthrow of the Bourbon monarchy. Good. I hope you... I, I don't know. In 1830, he served as Minister of War, but retired from public life in 1830, following the overthrow of the Bourbon monarchy. Maybe you should retire from life, too. 10. Marshal Murat. Oh, Murat. They, I think they talked about him a lot. Like, they literally mentioned... I, I think so, at least. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. But I know they mentioned they. Sorry, guys, my English is bad. Ugh, but they mentioned his name a lot. That's what I meant. Thought I had to sneeze for a second. Anyways, let's. let's continue. I cannot cons. Wait, what? I cannot conceive how brave a man could be so unreliable. Oh. He was only brave when facing the enemy. In council, he was a fool with no judgment. Dang. Okay. Joachim Mira, the son of an innkeeper, was destined for a career in the church, but dropped out of college and joined a cavalry regiment instead. To his immense frustration, he saw little action in the early years of the Revolutionary Wars, being stuck with staff and training roles. But in 1795, while stationed in Paris with the 21st Chasseurs, fate intervened. A young general, Ooh. Napoleon Bonaparte, had been oh put my in gosh, charge. Look at his hair now. What is with Napoleon's hair? The defense of the National Convention. With a mob poised to storm the building, he ordered Captain Murat to bring him cannons. 
which he did, racing the guns through the city streets, allowing Napoleon to mow down the mob with a famous whiff of grape shot. Mm. Napoleon was hailed as the savior of the government and rewarded with command of the army of Italy. Murat was promoted colonel and went with him as his new aide-de-camp. He soon made a name for himself as a bold and brilliant leader of cavalry. Nice. While his six-foot height, curly locks and love of women ensured fame as France's foremost beau sabreur. <laughs> in 1790... Oh yeah, I keep forgetting. I need, to start, I need to start guessing the names again. Yeah, if I successfully guess in like any of these names, I will donate a Julian dollars to charity. Twenty-eight. Murat joined Napoleon's expedition to Egypt. At the battle, they didn't have an episode about this. What the heck? They should. They should have made an episode about his expedition to Egypt. Then I don't. They never made. Really go over it that much. Of Abu Kir, his flanking charge broke the enemy, and Murat personally took the Ottoman commander prisoner, despite being shot in the jaw, a wound Jeez. which, to his immense relief, did not ruin his looks. <laughs> Back in Paris, Napoleon launched his coup d'etat to seize political power. When he got a hostile reception from the Council of 500, it was Murat who saved the day leading troops in to clear the chamber, shouting, Citizens, you have been dissolved, before adding something a bit more coarse. His place at the future emperor's side was further assured when he married Napoleon's youngest sister, okay. Caroline, in 1800. Later that year, he commanded the French cavalry reserve at Marengo and helped Napoleon to win a decisive victory over the Austrians. Nice. When Napoleon oh. established his empire in 1804, Murat became wow. a marshal, second in seniority only to Berthier. He later also received the title Prince of the Empire and the rank of Grand Admiral. So why isn't this guy higher? Why is he only like what he is? It makes you wonder what the strong, what the best marshal is. Seriously. In the 1805 campaign, he commanded Napoleon's cavalry reserve. Oh yeah, I remember this. Look at looking at this portrait, like literally so many times. This guy it was everywhere in the episodes. His excellent reconnaissance and diversions proving crucial in the encirclement of General Max, Austrian army, at Ulm. Three weeks later. Murat and Marshal Lannes, who normally couldn't stand each other, together bluffed an Austrian commander into surrendering a vital bridge by persuading him that an armistice had been signed when it hadn't. Oh, gosh. It was a bold stunt, but overall Napoleon was not impressed by Murat's pursuit of the enemy. I cannot what? approve your manner of march. You go on like a stunned fool, taking not the least notice of my orders. <laughs> Yet in battle, Murat remained a brilliant and inspiring leader, as demonstrated at Austerlitz. And the oh yeah, wasn't this guy the same guy who went to like surrendered or something and went to become the king of uh, Kingdom of Two Sicilies, whatever that place is called? I I think I think the so. next year at Jena where he led the decisive charge, wielding only his riding crop. The next year, at Eilau, with the Russians poised to break through his center, Napoleon ordered Murat to lead a mass cavalry charge straight at the enemy. Murat's men succeeded and saved the army from disaster, though at a terrible price, in men and horses. Napoleon had rewarded Murat in 1806 by making him sovereign prince of the Grand Duchy of Berg. <laughs> Grand Duchy of Berg? What? What an interesting name. Oh, Berg and Cleves. What is Cleves? In 1808, he sent Murat to Spain to act as his representative. 
Spain was still a French ally. Okay, so it turns out that the reason why it keeps crashing, crashing, is because they decided they would put a 10 minute recording limit on all their videos, on all the videos that you record. So, wow, thank you. First screencastify, that was like years ago. And now, and then Loom, which is probably like the best free screen recorder in the world, to be honest. And now, uh, this, which, whatever it's called, Story Express screen recorder. Which, probably after Loom was the best screen recorder. The only thing that made it not as good was the fact that whenever you download your videos, it downloads them as W in some things instead of just regular mp4s which makes it really hard to edit and mess around with so yeah uh, yeah i'm just yeah so make sure to give it a one star in the chrome store everyone who's watching this just, like right now right now just pause the video go to chrome store type it in like i'm just gonna i don't want to go to different chat but from store, type that in, type in story x press, and then I want you to give it a one star. Then I want you to write, um, get rid of 10 minute recording limit. So, yeah. Room, they decide to have a five minute recording limit, so that's nice, that's great. So at least they're slightly, slightly better. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep recording these over and over again, and then uh, putting them all together in my editor it doesn't really matter. It's just really annoying, because I don't know when it's gonna stop. Well, I do, but whatever. Let's keep going, I, I've been wasting too much time. Sent Murad to Spain to act as his representative. Spain was still a French ally, but in May, Napoleon's heavy handed meddling in Spanish affairs triggered a ferocious backlash. Oh gosh. What Madrid rose up against the French garrison. And Murad's troops fought back with brutal force, killing know. around 200, executing 300 more. When Napoleon deposed Spain's Bourbon monarchy, Murat hoped he'd be made the new king of Spain. But that title went to Napoleon's brother, Joseph. Oh, gosh. Murat instead received the throne of Naples. Oh, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was talking about earlier. But I thought that, like, he betrayed him or something. But I don't know, I guess I'm wrong. If it felt like second prize, it wasn't bad going for an innkeeper's son, college dropout, and ex-cavalry trooper. Napoleon expected Murat to merely represent his interests in Naples, but Murat had other ideas. <laughs> Look at him, he has a little tiger, um, rug thingy, that grand horse. What the heck is he wearing? He reformed the Neapolitan army, equipping it with splendid new uniforms, and turned a blind eye to smuggling, which undermined Napoleon's economic war against Britain, so-called Continental System. Relations between Murat and the Emperor became strained. Oh, God. But when Napoleon began planning to invade Russia in 1812, only Murat would do to lead his cavalry. Their differences were put to one side, Murat took command of four cavalry corps and became Napoleon's second in command. During the advance into Russia, Murat's cavalry faced a difficult and frustrating task, trying to locate the enemy in a vast landscape. Horses died in their thousands from poor fodder and exhaustion, and they faced a dangerous and wily opponent in Russia's Cossacks. Murat, always riding with the advance guard, was so fearless and conspicuous in his extravagant uniforms that the Cossacks came to admire him, calling out, Hurrah, Murat, whenever they saw him. 
and hope to capture him alive if possible. Fuhrer was among those who tried to persuade Napoleon to halt the advance at Smolensk, but was ignored. At the great clash between the French and Russian armies at Borodino, Fuhrer was at his best, directing a series of attacks on the Russian earthworks, nice. always where the action was hottest, inspiring all with his courage. Murat remained with the army during the retreat from Moscow, though his magnificent cavalry had virtually ceased to exist. One eyewitness noted that throughout the ordeal, he never neglected his appearance. Even at the Beretsina, he looked splendid, in an open-necked shirt, velvet cloak, a white feather in his cap. Oh my gosh. When Napoleon left the army to return to Paris, gave command to Marshal Murat. But Murat, now primarily concerned with hanging on to his kingdom, left the army a month later and returned to Naples, where he opened secret negotiations with the coalition. Oh, this is the part where betrays. Okay. Okay, because I thought that something like this would happen. He offered to join the war against Napoleon if Whoa. the other powers would let him keep his crown. But he received only a lukewarm response. So in 1813, when Napoleon asked Murat to join him in Germany, to fight for their thrones together, he answered the call. Uh, Murat you had become increased. You donkey, if you would have just accepted. Like, why did they not accept? I don't get that. Why, what reason did they have not to accept? Increasingly difficult to work with. Oversensitive about his royal status. Prone to tantrums. But in battle, as fearless as ever. At Dresden, his charge through rain and mud shattered the Austrian left wing and paved the way for victory. Paved the way for victory. But then, at Liebert Volkwitz, he showed his limitations when not under Napoleon's direct command, oh, no. getting drawn into a major and unnecessary cavalry battle with coalition forces, and twice nearly being captured himself. Two days later, at the Battle of Leipzig, he led another of history's great cavalry charges, coming close to breaking the enemy center and even capturing the Allied monarchs. Nice. But it was not to be. The Battle of the Nations ended in a disastrous defeat. Wait, what? As Napoleon retreated to the French frontier, Murat informed the Emperor that he was leaving for Naples, promising to raise fresh troops. Murat and Napoleon. Oh no, is he gonna raise fresh troops? Is he? I have a feeling what's gonna happen next. Would never meet again. Oh god. Three months later, the King of Naples had cut a deal with the coalition and switched sides. So long as it was possible for me to believe that the Emperor Napoleon was fighting to bring peace and glory to France, I fought loyally at his side, Murat declared. But now, I know that the Emperor's sole desire is war. I guess I get what he means, because France, I mean, Napoleon turned down two uh, peace deals. So I, I guess I see where he's coming from when he says that. However, Murat's commitment to the Sixth Coalition was distinctly half-hearted. His army marched against Eugène's forces in northern Italy, but had done no actual fighting before news arrived of Napoleon's abdication. Murat then began to suspect what had been obvious to Napoleon, at least. The Coalition was not going to honor its promise, and Murat would be next to lose his throne. Oh, so, in 1815, Encouraged. Oh! Oh, wait. Never mind. I don't know why I said that. But, wait. If he lost his throne, then why did he help Napoleon whenever Napoleon came back from exile? By news of Napoleon's. Re oh, shoot! 1767 to 1815. He's gonna be killed! Oh, no! How old is he, by the way? Like, I don't know, 33, 
Oh. Return from exile. You're up. Okay, this recording limit thing is already getting annoying. I'm gonna find a new recorder. Or maybe I'll be too lazy. I don't know. Y'all will just have to find out. So, in my next episode, by the. Hold on, I'll just tell you off the end. I don't know why. Encouraged by news of Napoleon's return from exile, Murat marched north against the Austrians, yeah. proclaiming a war for Italian freedom and independence. Yeah. Just seven weeks later, his campaign ended in defeat at the Battle of Tolentino. Uh, oh. With the British and Austrians closing in, Murat became a hunted fugitive. Oh, he sailed to France, but Napoleon had not forgiven his betrayal and refused to see him. Dang. After Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo, he fled to Corsica, gathered a small band of volunteers, and returned to Italy in a hopelessly doomed attempt to start a revolution and reclaim his throne. Chased by a mob and arrested on the beach, Murat was sentenced to death by the restored Bourbon monarchy oh, of Naples. What? Thank you. He met his end with his usual courage, telling the firing squad, if you wish to spare me, aim at the heart. Then gave the order to fire himself. is rightly remembered as one of the great battlefield cavalry commanders of history. Inspirational, fearless, brilliant tactical instinct. But outside of combat, he was, in Napoleon's estimation, a very poor general. He always waged war without maps. Worse, when the conflict turned against France, he allowed self-interest and vanity to prevail over loyalty to the Emperor. As Napoleon's chief of staff, Marshal Berthier, once told him, you're only... Marshal Berthier? Sounds like that says Berthier. Again, these French names are interesting. And I didn't pronounce... I didn't... I forgot to pronounce the other names. Well, I'll just do it next episode. If there is... A king by the grace of Napoleon and French blood. It's black ingratitude that's blinding you. Sancerre, Houdino, Victor, Murat. So we're gonna have two more episodes? Oh. 17 down, 9 to go. Join us for part. If Murat was number 10, then these other ones must be really, really good. Because, seriously. Uh, the way they describe Mirat and his battles seems to be really good. But, anyways. That's it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and also, um, in my next episode, I'm gonna be doing video about the history of the world. No, it's not the one by Bill Works. But it's it's gonna be like a video of of me reacting to like the world map and it like changing through the years. Because why not? That would be actually pretty fun. You know, just reacting to all the different historical developments, geopolitical um you know things that happen. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Of watching everyone, and we are five subscribers away from 200 subscribers. On that day, I'll be doing a big video, big surprise video. It's gonna have a bunch of little cool stuff. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, bye. Hello, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel, and you know, turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. Oh yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good, and if not, better than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that I either know, or I have in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.